Tensira X Gate. Thus the JSDF fought their ex how realist hero rebuild the kingdom by Noru Sensei. Chapter 8. Memories and Return Shizu Izawa Pav. Hi, everyone. I'm Izawa Shizu. I've come back for the Oban Festival. I then took a walk around to see what is Slime San doing. As I walked around to the village, waiting this can't be called a village but a town I wondered. I wonder how Slime San is doing. I decided to visit because I was wondering about that, but that tiny town is a bustling city of so many monsters now. I though to myself as I passed on an unsuspecting orc talking to his friend. I've heard rumors that Slime San is living in a form resembling my own, it's a bit embarrassing. Uawa. I heard a voice. Then when I looked to see, there was a girl running wearing a bunny suit. W wait. I is that S Slime San? Huff huff why is it always clothes like these? Slime San said in embarrassment. It looks so nice on you, Rimuru Sama, a girl said with pink hair who is holding a maid outfit. H huh? I said subconsciously and I felt really red right now out of embarrassment. We still have more, a woman said with purple hair, holding a school swimsuit with the name, Rimuru, onto it. Please, no, Slime San said as he runs while being looked at by the bystanders. H how embarrassing Slime San. Two think a look around more, why yes that must be. Then I left the town out of embarrassment. In the next day I came to check on the trio. That is Kaval, Oren, and Guido. I remember when Kaval poked a nest. So we decided to run as fast as possible. Why do you have to poke at its nest? Oren shouted as we run as fast as we can. We're going to die, Guido then said out loud. I couldn't help it, I was curious, Kaval reasoned. I finally had enough so I told them, enough chatter, just run, while looking at them and running. While I remember those moments, I went to the kingdom of Gloomin to find the trio. Just a few seconds later I found them at a cafe. It looks like they're talking to each other. I can see Iren was looking at a certain direction, Guido who was drinking his tea noticed it and asked Iren. What's the matter? I'm not sure. I dreamed about Shizu San for the first time in a while, she replied. Oh, I, did too, Kaval then said, so did I, Guido commented. We should visit her grave, except I guess she doesn't have one. It was the leader of the monster city that laid her rest. I wonder how Rimuru San's doing, Kaval said. We should, at least, say a prayer while we're here, Oren said as she looks at the church nearby. Then they went near the church and prayed for a bit. Shizu San, we're doing just fine as adventurers, Oren said. We're dirt poor, but we're having fun, Guido followed. Please continue to watch over us, Kaval then finished. I wish they can see me again, I waved my hand and said to them. Of course. Good luck. Then they started to walk towards to the direction of Jura Forest. So, what was Shizu San like in your dream? Kaval asked Oren about what she dreamed about me. Actually, she was in the form of a bunny being chased by monsters, Oren said with a smile on her face. Eh, h huh? I reacted surprised from what Oren just said. W wait, I think you got that wrong. Oh, yeah, that look suited her, Kaval said. Wait, wait, something's wrong here. I said out of embarrassment, but they didn't hear it. She was into that kind of thing, Guido then commented. You've got it all wrong, I said out of embarrassment, and still my face was red. I know I'm dead already, but I want to die. I thought to myself out of embarrassment. Later that day I went back to Tempest to check on Slime San. He was smiling. It's so nice to see that he is smiling. I just stood there while smiling at the scene where Slime San is happy. I wish I lived to see it myself and feel it with Slime San though, but for me, it's already more than enough to see him like this. I thought to myself as I left Tempest again to check other spot. Well I can only be here a few hours more so I explored a bit more. In the next morning I visited Rimuru San, this time this will be my final visit before going back to the spirit realm and wait for me to be reincarnated. I walked towards where Slime San is then, I heard him saying. Sorry, Shizu San. I had so much to do, I ran late, it's not incense, but I made something similar. Slime San said while looking at the mask I left behind then put something similar like a incense then there are smoke on it. It's fine, Slime San. I understand that you were busy, I said while getting near to him. 
I threw it together in a rush, but it feels like Oban, right? Slime San asks me. I know he is asking me despite knowing that I can't answer his question. Hi, it feels like Oban Slime San. I answered to his question. I know you may not hear my answer Slime San, but it did feels like Oban. The body and skills I inherited from you have been a huge help. I hope I get to thank you someday, but I might not have the strength for that just yet. Sorry. Slime San said as he became silent to pay respect to me. I then decided to hug him and said, Don't worry, as long as you're living a fun life in my form, that's enough. I thought my life was over, but you have me a wonderful gift I could have expected. I said to him sincerely. But I really wish I stayed alive to see it and experience it more thought. It's a shame that I left you so early, but having you see you won't be lost in direction and be happy, it would be fine for me. Then I remembered something to tell for Slime San. But, go easy on the embarrassing outfits if you can, okay? I requested to him. Tell that to those too. Those were the last words I heard before being back to the spiritual realm. Did Slime San perhaps heard me? I thought to myself but then disregarded it because that would be impossible. Kigali POV. Hello everyone, you probably know who I am here, so no need to intro no never mind. I'm known right now as Kigali. You also know me before as Kazarim, one of the old demon lords that Leon had beaten up. If you think, I'm a male, no you're wrong. I was actually a princess before. It's shameful that I forgot my name at that time. But at the same time I can't forget a certain someone did to me. It was centuries ago when I was still a princess of the once I called home, the nation's name was Ultra Sorcery Kingdom of Elves. Which at the time was one of the most prosperous kingdoms in the world. I was very close to my father, but that changed when he suddenly began to treat me like I'm not his beloved daughter, and that I didn't exist. I was heartbroken by it, since then I began to suffer. I suffered a great deal of misfortune due to my father the king. Later on I was stripped out of my own power and later on being experimented by him. Then after those suffering days, I finally died. I thought at first that I'm finally free from those sorrows, all of my sufferings I had, but that was just the beginning. I was resurrected by my father as a deathman, albeit with a rotting, twisted and an ugly form due to a curse my father placed on me. I begged him to return my peaceful and loving ways, but my pleas fell on dear ears of his. In my fit of rage I lashed out and used my power of curse. That changed me into a man and renamed me as Kazarim. I'm ashamed of my once beautiful face was now gone forever all because of him. So I was forced to wear a mask to hide my ugly face and robes to hide my scarred body. Then I started to be referred as my new name, Kazarim. Eventually, my homeland would spell its own destruction by foolish acts of my father, who angered Milam Nava, the daughter of Star King Dragon Veldanava Sama resulting in our nation being completely obliterated as the capital of our elven empire was reduced to nothing by a bright beam of pure destruction. I was one of the few remaining elves who survived the disaster. Witnessing Milam's wrath firsthand, it caused me to adopt a healthy fear and respect for her power. I was devastated by the loss of the maid servants and the knights who loved me and I was desperate to see them again, I used the forbidden spell open double angle bracket birthday close double angle bracket. The result was the creation of three beautiful deathmen I later named as Clayman, Footman and Tear. Upon seeing they didn't appear ugly, I realized that my appearance was the result of a curse that my father had placed on me. These individuals were specifically engineered in order to give them unique traits, where Clayman was engineered to specifically become a demon lord while Footman and Tear had formidable combat prowess to make them a match against a demon lord. In order to never forget the humiliation of the past, I fell prey to the forbidden art. As one of the surviving elven royalty, I attempted to rebuild my lost homeland. At some point after establishing a settlement for my fellow elves, the Chaos Dragon attacked and contaminated the land, causing the elves to be cursed to live their lives as dark elves. By using the knowledge and technology I preserved from the original fallen elven nation, now known as the Great Ruin, Soma, I managed to expand on and recreate many of its lost technologies, resulting in the creation of the capital city, Amrita, of the puppet nation Jistog. I later traveled back to the ruins of my former country to retrieve our treasures. On my journey, I encountered Sarian Grimwald, the chosen hero who had been tasked with eliminating the Chaos Dragon, but was mortally wounded and affected by its cursed attacks. I on the other hand, who had been observing his battle, I offered him the choice of being reborn, 
but I warned him that he would not only become my puppet but would also lose his memories. Sarian agreed, firmly believing he would never forget his memories and his wife Sylvia. With the negotiations concluded, I used the spell, but due to my inexperience, Sarian was reborn as a deathman but lost all his memories. From there he was given a new name and identity as Laplace, the Wonder Pieriot. I was one of the demon lords active prior to the appearance of Clayman, Frey and Carrion. Overcoming persecution during the war between the demi-humans and humans, I emerged as the curse lord, Kazalim. I quickly built up a fearsome reputation as a cunning schemer due to my uncanny ability to gather information. During my time as one of the demon lords, I was known to have battled against Roy Valentine, who I have noted to have power equivalent to my own. Our battle was destructive enough that all the surrounding territories around them were destroyed, resulting in the passing of a certain custom, which has seen whereby all disputes between demon lords are decided via a majority vote. However, despite having fought him, it was shown that I was oblivious to demon lord Valentine's true position as a servant to the actual demon lord Ruminus Valentine, holding his council seat. I, alongside Milam, would also advocate the claim of Carrion as a demon lord and would also back up Frey and Clayman's claims in order to allow them into the council in order to obtain further political pull amongst fellow demon lords. Eventually, I would come across and hear about Leon Cromwell, who had declared himself a demon lord. As no one stepped up to support his claim, he was deemed a self proclaimed demon lord, causing me to step in to eliminate Leon for daring to call himself a demon lord, leading to the two of us fighting each other. In actuality, however, I wanted to gain more power and decided to recruit Leon, as what I did with Carrion and Frey, hoping to teach Leon a lesson in humility. However, upon reaching his territory and seeing his beautiful face, I was enraged and jealous, reminded me of my lost beauty, and I attacked him. I lost the fight and my body was destroyed. However, I had successfully survived their encounter and for over a hundred years, I wandered around as a disembodied spirit, with my consciousness and mind slowly dissipating due to lack of a body. It was only until ten years prior to Rimuru Sama's reincarnation that I successfully possessed and shared the body with an otherworlder, Yuki Kagurazaka, and from there I acquired the female elf homunculus body. Grateful for Yuki's help, despite originally having tried to snatch his body, I began working closely together with him to reach their shared goals, and took on the identity of Kigali, Yuki's secretary. I was blinded by my revenge to Leon Cromwell, that I soon died being killed by him again. Now, I'm here in Rimuru Sama's void for some reason. I realized that I was under mind control by Michael. I was frustrated that I didn't realize it myself. Despite us being former enemies, Rimuru Sama still showed me some kindness and salvation. I may be right now in her void. Rimuru Sama would have erased my existence completely. Now I will wait for her to resurrect me and I'll devote my life for her sake. Rimuru, original, Pav. It was already 79 years since Shizu San's death. We just came back from Falmart continent. We were welcomed by the whole citizen and we were overwhelmed. I left the party earlier for me to take a rest. I at first hesitated to either resurrect Shizu San or not, but I have decided to resurrect her. If Shizu San is disappointed about her being here again, I'll try to convince her and show that I've already achieved peace. I then left my bedroom to go at the room I reserved for Shizu San. As I entered the room, I ordered Diablo via thought communication to not let anyone, even Shuna, Chloe, my siblings, and the rest of the executives, to go near the hallway going to Shizu San's room. Greater than seal, are the preparations ready? Less than I asked her. Less than yes, master, all preparations are complete. You may start to resurrect the individual Shizu Izawa, greater than she replied. I nodded and I started the preparations. Voice of the world, in my name Rimuru Tempest. I order you to resurrect Shizu Izawa. I ordered the open double angle bracket voice of the world close double angle bracket. Orders received from our true deity and creator Rimuru Tempest Sama. Resurrection of the individual, Shizu Izawa, beginning. Successful. Preparing her original body. Successful. As the voice of the world finished resurrecting Shizu San, Seal requested her. Less than voice of the world, in the name of goddess of wisdom and knowledge, Manas. Seal. I request you to reconstruct the individual, Shizu Izawa's body into divine human and grant her the ultimate skills. Wisdom Lord Raphael close hollow corner bracket, goddess of the sun, Amaterasu close hollow corner bracket, goddess love, Rimuru Tempest close hollow corner bracket, 
goddess of fate and destiny fortuna close hollow corner bracket goddess of all flames kathuga close hollow corner bracket akashic book of records greater than request by goddess of wisdom and knowledge manas seal sama accepted giving her the following ultimate skills successful giving the individual shizu izawa all resistances successful said by voice of the world as the bright golden light shines down i can see shizu san laying down on the bed with her eyes still closed shizu izawa pav as i was waiting for my turn to be reincarnated a sudden voice can be heard voice of the world in my name rimuru tempest i order you to resurrect shizu izawa said in a serious tone w wait is that slime san's voice slime san is trying to revive me i thought to myself then all of a sudden i felt my soul going back into a body ah this nostalgic feeling of having a body again then i felt like my body was being reconstructed i heard everything from what the voice of the world had said it looks like i am now a divine human and had the following ultimate skills and all resistance it was all thanks to shli no rimuru san i then opened my eyes to see rimuru san smiling at me i subconsciously let go a tear from my eye then she suddenly hugged me i was at first hesitant to hug her back but i hugged her as she had her tears also welcome back shizu san rimuru san said while sobbing i'm back slime san no rimuru san i said as she hugs me tightly and i just reciprocated her warm hug i've already achieved it shizu san i know rimuru san i've already seen it thank you for granting my request i told her warmly rimuru san then looked at me at the eye and she gave a wonderful and beautiful smile then she said you're always welcome shizu san then suddenly i felt a soft pair of lips onto mine i then reciprocated it and closed my eyes out of happiness so this is a kiss feels like i want more we kissed there for five minutes then our lips parted with a string of saliva rimuru san then suddenly bowed to me and said i'm sorry for suddenly kissing you shizu san but i can't stop myself i missed you so much she said with a tear on her eye no it's okay rimuru san i enjoyed the kiss and as time as i observed you from time to time i fell in love with you you have me another reason wanting to live in this world but sadly i'm already died when i wanted it rimuru san i've always thought that seeing you happy would be enough for me but as time goes by i can't help but also be envious to chloe i already know about her being my former teacher now i understand her actions right now that i'm alive again i want to be with you forever i don't care if you already became a female i love you for who you are i if it's okay with you i want you to marry me i said all of those i felt i have said that i shouldn't have said shizu you idiot i said to myself rimuru san was quiet for a moment then she had me a smile then suddenly hugged me again then she said i love you too shizu san i loved you already 79 years ago i didn't know at first either to resurrect you or not i resurrected you with all of my selfishness i thought you would have been disappointed in me or would hate me i'm really glad that it's not the case rimuru san almost broke down in tears at the end then she started to cry i stroke her hair as i hug her then i said to her i would never hate you for that rimuru san you did well holding up your feelings i would never leave at your side rimuru san i said in a sweet low voice to reassure her i'll marry you shizu san it's a yes but i should have asked that to you she said in a cute voice then we kissed again this time we didn't stop for two hours then after we parted our kiss we smiled at each other then we hold hands as we left the room now i know you have some question aren't i basically naked all those times no i was not rimuru san had already prepared my old clothing when my body was made and reconstructed no perverted thoughts okay third pod the world doesn't know about shizu as i was returned to this world as rimuru concealed the open double angle bracket voice of the world close double angle bracket s announcement to the public only selected individuals heard the voice of the world that being is shuna diablo velzard Velgrind, Veldora, Testarossa, Carrera, Ultima, and Guy. Later on, Rimuru introduced Shizu as her fiance. All of the citizens cheered in happiness. Those who knows about Shizu cried in happiness. Later on, Shizu and Rimuru were questioned by all of the executives. 
Then after some long Q&A they finally led a banquet to celebrate Tempest's new queen and her return. But little did they know, Rimuru had one more surprise in her sleeve. Kigali POV. I'm currently observing Rimuru-sama from her void when suddenly I heard a voice. Kigali, I order you to come out there, it was a voice from Rimuru-sama. I obliged then I felt my soul going back to a familiar body that I missed so much. I opened my eyes to see I'm in a room. I looked around to see the black primordial now known as Diablo, the white primordial now known as Testarossa, Benamaru-sama and finally Rimuru-sama. I then bowed my head and said. I've come to answer your call Rimuru-sama, raise your head Kigali, Rimuru-sama ordered. I followed her order then I saw a woman of average height with black eyes and black hair. Her beauty was similar to Rimuru-sama's. This must be Shizu Izawa-sama. What do you need of me, Rimuru-sama? I asked. I'll ask you a question. Are you willing to serve under me? Rimuru-sama asked. I, of course Rimuru-sama. You are kind enough to show me your mercy. I will devote my life serving you. I bowed my head as I said that. Very well, I think you can already tell that your body right now is the original body you had once before you were cursed by Jahil. H. Hi, thank you so much for giving me back this body, I said to her out of respect. Then I will grant you the ultimate skills immortal close hollow corner bracket, loyal lord Hachiko close hollow corner bracket, and fortune lord Agastia close hollow corner bracket. With all resistance as a sign of you becoming my subordinate, Rimuru Sama said in a divine voice. I accept, Rimuru Sama, I said in determination. Then I felt the change in my body, then after my evolution, I once again bowed my head to my master. Now then, I first cancelled the sleep in your evolution. I shall give you a new name, Rimuru Sama said. W what name shall I be known now Rimuru Sama, I asked. I will grant you the name of Kumiko. Serve me well, Kumiko chan. Rimuru sama said as she gave me a smile. Then another change felt on my body. I felt my system being replaced, especially my name from Kigali to Kumiko. Then I felt I need to sleep all of a sudden. Go and take a rest for now, Rimuru sama ordered. I gave a nod and smile as I lost my consciousness. Rimuru, original, Pog. Few days later we got married. It was one of the most happiest moments in my life. Currently, I'm enjoying my tea with Shizu San together with Shuna, Chloe, Hanada, Alice, Ryota, Kenya, Gail, and Eren. We talked about so much on WHQT happened. We laughed together. This feels warm. I will make sure we can have this moment forever. I'll protect the smiles of everyone important to me. Now, then, after this elegant tea time of ours, it's time to make our plan. What plan you ask? The plan of possible war against those major three. Japan is now under our protection. We will only activate this operation and plan when one of them make a move. You may think I'm joking, but I'm serious about my warning. I'll show you a part of my forces can do. I thought to myself as I took a sip of my tea.